Hello. Thank you for tuning in to another lesson today. We are going through a year study of meditations, and we are using A Course in Miracles. I am reading this for my Seraphim Holistic Center and for the community here as well on the internet and social media. I appreciate you for starting a practice and for tuning in. Uh, meditation has been a proven strategy and technique for reducing stress, reducing anxiety, bringing more joy, well-being, peace, and also increasing performance. And so I'm here to share with you every day this year. And today we're in lesson 19 of A Course in Miracles. I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts. The idea for today is obviously the reason why you're seeing does not affect you alone. You will notice what at times the ideas related to thinking precede those related to perceiving, while at other times the order is reversed. The reason is that the order does not matter. Thinking and its results are really simultaneous for cause and effect are never separate. Today, we are again emphasizing the fact that minds are joined. This is rarely a wholly welcome idea at first, since it seems to carry with it an enormous sense of responsibility and may even be regarded as an invasion of privacy. Yet, it is a fact that there are no private thoughts. Despite your initial resistance to this idea, you will yet understand that it must be true if salvation is possible at all. And salvation must be possible because it is the will of God. The minute or so of mind searching, which today's exercises require, is to be undertaken with eyes closed. The, ideas, the idea for today is to repeat, be repeated first. And then the mind should be carefully searched for the thoughts it contains at that time. As you consider each one, name it in terms of the central person or theme it contains and holding it in your mind as you do so. Say, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of this thought about blank. The requirement of as much indiscriminateness as possible in selecting subjects for the practice periods should be quite familiar to you by now and will no longer be repeated each day, although it will occasionally be included as a reminder. Do not forget, however, that random selection of subjects for all practice periods remains essential throughout. Lack of order in this connection will ultimately make the recognition of lack of order in miracles meaningful to you. Apart from the as needed application of today's idea, at least three practice periods are required, shortening the length of time involved if necessary. Do not attempt more than four. Thank you, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. I'm also going to go straight into the text again today. And we are on the meaning of miracles, principles of miracles, and we're on number 13. Miracles are both beginnings and endings. And so they alter the temporal order. They are always affirmations of rebirth, which seem to go back, but really go forward. They undo the past in the present and thus release the future. Miracles bear witness to truth. They are convincing because they arise from conviction. Without conviction, they deteriorate into magic which is mindless and therefore destructive, or rather the uncreative use of mind. Each day should be devoted to miracles. The purpose of time is to enable you to learn how to use time constructively. It is thus a teaching device and it means, and a means to an end. Time will cease when it is no longer useful in facilitating learning. Miracles are teaching devices for demonstrating it is as blessed to give as to receive. They simultaneously increase the strength of the giver and supply strength to the receiver. Miracles transcend the body. They are sudden shifts into invisibility, away from the bodily level. 
that is why they heal. Thanks for tuning in again today. I'll be back on the next video. If you're looking for us at the center, please go to sundaymeditate.com and I'll see you in the next video. Love you.